Welcome to the Haunted Heritage Tour of Rutherglen Library. In 1907, Rutherglen Public Library was built with Carnegie funding of £7,500. The wealthy Scottish businessman Andrew Carnegie donated this fund to the Royal Borough of Rutherglen in order that the very first public library could be opened. Carnegie buildings are characterised by their top quality materials and attention to detail. The matching post office extension to the library was not added until 1911, although it was made to appear like it was built at the same time. Rulligan Library was built during the Edwardian period. The style of the time was Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau is characterised by a lot of detailed, ornate motifs. On the outside of the building, carved into the sandstone, are a lot of different elaborate carvings, including the famous Rulligan Borough coat of arms. And the coat of arms is also continued throughout Rulligan Library in the interior. During the opening week in 1907, they had already prepared a beautifully bound public library catalogue which listed all the books and all the newspapers in the library. The front of the library catalogue listed several pages of library bylaws and these are really fascinating and very funny reading actually including my favourite, which is Clause 4. No person who is intoxicated, uncleanly in person or clothing, or who is suffering from an infectious or offensive disease, shall enter or be allowed to remain in the library. No audible conversation shall be permitted in any reading room, nor shall any person partake of refreshments, whistle, smoke, spit or sleep therein, or bring in any animal or any cycle or other cumbrous or inconvenient article. And with rules like these, it's actually no wonder that librarians got the reputation of being rather austere and strict about things. And it's only taken us about 100 years to try and dispel that stereotype. However, we're getting there. And I think anyone who's been in a library in the past few years can attest it's really not very quiet in there anymore. This incredible photograph was taken in 1910 to commemorate the crowning of the new king, George V. A proclamation was made outside the library. However, also in this photograph, if you look closely in the top floor of the building, there are two small, ghostly looking children looking out of the window. No, in fact, they're not ghosts, but they're two of the six children who lived on the top floor. And that's because their father was the very first librarian of Rulligan Library. He was called William Ross Shearer, and it's thanks to Shearer that we know so much about Rulligan history. His book, Rulligan Lore, is the classic book on Rulligan history. It was published in 1922 by the Raglonian Society, which Shearer had also founded. It's full of his original photographs, as he was a professional photographer. The Shearer family were only the first of five families that lived in the librarian's flat on the top floor. The back door to the librarian's flat opens out onto the library roof, which you can see here, the dome from the other side. And what's that? It's a washing pole, that's right. There's four washing poles on the roof of the library. And that's where the librarians used to hang their washing. A lot of large public libraries at this time would have a glass dome and also some very tall high windows as well. And this was for the reason of letting in reading light because in the era that these buildings were being created, 
there wasn't any electricity. So this is why the glass dome feature becomes very common in a lot of Carnegie libraries. Very much the focal point of our building is the stained glass dome created by J.C. Hall and Company with beautiful Art Nouveau stylizations in a lovely pale green colour and the stained glass windows around the library are also in keeping with this style and colouring. Going up the stairs into what is now the staff area, you'll see an awful lot more oak panelling, beautifully carved oak banisters and a absolutely incredible four panelled Art Nouveau window. It's up here that we have our staff room and it's been a staff area since the 1980s, although it used to be Rulligan Museum up until the 1960s. To the left is the chief librarian's office. Right. It's relatively unchanged since 1907. We've still got oak panelling throughout with two inbuilt oak cabinets. Some amazing Art Nouveau style details in this room. Interesting design feature in that the wall behind the librarian's desk has got hinges in it and it was designed like that so that the whole wall can be pulled back like a concertina and that was designed so that they could hold a bigger lecture um, and lantern slides. The beautiful ornate cornicing that's in every room in the building. There are also some brass Edwardian fireplaces among many other beautiful features and even wait a minute is that a bell oh, don't expect to see a bell in a library but there we are this is actually a 1950s photograph of the main library it's a rather beautiful evocative picture of what going to your local library looked like and yes there was a bell there for many years and even better, this bell was rung at closing time every day. The huge brass bell was actually from a ship. Shown here is the Isle of Arran, the ship that was built locally in Rutherglen Boatyard, Tammy Seaths. Tammy Seath, for many, many years, was building ships that sailed all across the world. And there's an awful lot of information you can find out about Seath Shipyard in Rulligan Heritage Centre. The library has always been at the heart of the community in Rutherglen. In 1974, there was a Landomer Day revival. And for the first time in its history, they started to crown the Landomer Queen on a stage outside the library. And this tradition has continued through the years up until present day. The float in front of the library was a maple float and there were many different floats throughout the years. Later on in the 1980s, and this is the interior, showing that at one point the library stocked computer games as well as cassette tapes and vinyl records. The library has always adapted to the demands of the public. In 2010, the library had its most recent large refurbishment. The library was able to extend through to the old post office building. This enabled us to have a new heritage centre on the first floor and an IT suite as well as a children's events room. Rulligan Heritage Centre has now been going for 11 years and we have hosted many, many events such as history talks, heritage drop-ins and reminiscence projects, volunteering sessions and many, many displays. We hope to invite lots of people back 
to attend some of our events soon, given the unforeseen circumstances of the pandemic from 2020 to 2021. But our doors will always remain open to the Rulligan community. We hope to see you all back here very soon. This is also where we have our very first known ghost story, passed down through a few generations of library staff. It was one day that a library assistant was closing up and she saw at the back of the reading room a man sitting, wearing a bonnet, looking down, reading a newspaper. She said to her colleague, I'm just going to go and tell the man over at the back of the library that it's time to go because it's closing time. Her colleague looked up from the main desk and said, What man? The woman looked over and right enough, there was no one there. Yeah, I was writing a lot about him and I was... Working late one night in the Heritage Centre, it was dark because we closed at eight that night and I was writing away all about his obituary that had been in the, the newspapers and then I thought, oh, wonder what the exact date of his death was. So I looked up uh, on Scotland's People, his death record, printed it out at my desk, went back to the other computer, which was the other side of the room because I was at the scanner and then finished writing the obituary. As I was sitting there, I had the distinct sense that somebody was behind me and looking at me. I turned around, didn't see anything, but it was enough to make me think, hmm, maybe it's time to go home now. It's nearly closing time, and I had to close that wing of the library. So... I went over to my other desk beside the printer to pick up the death re records that I'd just printed out. Nope, it was not there. It was gone. Completely gone. Could not see it. This seemed a bit odd. <laughs> Coupled with the fact I felt like somebody was looking over my shoulder as I'd been typing. So, I thought, fine, I'm not the most tidy person. I must have dropped it. It's fine. It's time to go. Time to get packed up, so got all packed up and closed the room, locked up, and I had to switch the, the light out in the hall to get into the lift so that I would be locking up that wing. So feeling a little bit spooked out, uh, switched the light out, jumped into the lift, pressed the ground button, and the lift froze. So needless to say, I ran out of the lift turning all the lights on and ran down the stairs as fast as I could. Since then, I have not at all ever found the death record. In fact, I had to print out another copy. So that's my ghost story and I still think to this day that it was Shearer looking over my shoulder saying, I think you should write a wee bit more about me. somebody staring at me. Mm -hmm. And did you turn around and look? Or I did kind you of just... moved my eyes and then mm -hmm. I kind of looked around at the IT and I seen a big shadow so come down. Did you see a shape in the shadow or anything? No, I just or a just... big shadow. It's just mm -hmm. a shadow. Really. And was it moving? Yes. A moving yes. shadow? Yes. <laughs> it's moving down the wall towards the basement. The shadow moved yes. down the wall from so, at the IT wall? Yeah. And, and it went, was the basement door open? No, or was it no, not? So the shadow, did it go through the, the door know. or I under don't it? Know. I went to check uh -huh. the basement. Right. And I shut up, but I went to check so you were, again. <laughs> you, weren't, to, you weren't running for the hills? You know, to see if anything, you went down. everything was all right. Yeah. And I just felt, as I was opening the door, I just felt a cold kind of shiver. Uh -huh. And I felt my hair all standing in the end, as if somebody was stroking my, my, <gasps> my back and my 
my hair. In the basement? Yeah, yeah in the basement. So you chased a ghostly shadow yeah, down to yeah, the basement yeah, to, <laughs> to make to sure that was very I, diligent. I had to go down there anyway. Uh -huh. Well, so, but yeah, I uh -huh. went down. Yeah, it was a stupid thing to do, but I've done it. <laughs> well, no, it's good. You had to check uh, the doors. I had to check locked the buildings everything. to see if everything was all uh -huh. switched off. Well, um, and that's when I felt the. So it was a cold, cold, kind of chill cold thing? shiver mm -hmm. down my body, and I felt my hair. The yeah. back of my hair was all standing in oh ends, my God. as if right. somebody was stroking the back of my my oh. hair. And how many years ago was that? That must have been about five years ago. <laughs> Well, there's the old story of the yeah the, yeah the, the possible sighting of a ghost yes um of this picture which yeah. um is of the the men in the reading room yeah so it could either be one of them it could possible be one if this is the sighting or it could be the old librarian it could be. And lived in the building the first thing that got in my mind was it was one of them and that, that was it did you think that I think so I don't know <laughs> I, that's what I'm thinking uh -huh, I really possibly. do not know. But or because you'd seen the picture as well. It wasn't going to hurt you anyway. Uh -huh. I think they were just amazed, maybe. <laughs> and um, have you ever felt like somebody's watching you before that? Uh, or is that the no, only no, time? No, that was the very first one. Uh -huh. Yeah, that yeah. was it. And you've uh, worked here a long time. Yeah, and I've never ever experienced it again. Yeah. And throughout the years, there's been various odd things that have happened in the library. Sometimes books have jumped off the shelves all by themselves. There's been reports of the old spiral staircase down to the basement creaking at strange times. And then there was only two years ago the story of somehow a pen flying out and hitting the back of a workman. And this was witnessed by another workman. So perhaps the conclusion we can reach is that some people love coming to the library so much that they just never leave. They're just happy sitting under the dome, reading their books, or in the case of Shearer, making sure that the archives are all in order and that people are finding the answers to their history inquiries exactly when they need it. Of course, what I haven't mentioned is what used to stand on the, the bit of ground where the library now is. It was this building. That's right, the old toll booth. It looks like a friendly sort of building. That used to be used for, oh, let's see, the town hall. And then it was also used for a police station. And before that, it was used for a jail. All sorts of criminals would spend the nights in the cells there. And goodness knows what else. So maybe some, somebody from there is haunting the place too. But that's another story. <laughs>